everyone, Dan from On One here. I want to show you how to use the powerful Resize AI module inside of On One Photo Raw. Before we jump into the details, let's talk about when you want to use Resize AI. It's used primarily for preparing your photo for print, whether you're going to print it on your own or whether you're going to send it to a service bureau. Its job is to take a photo and make it a lot bigger. Plus, it can also help you crop it, sharpen it, and do everything you need to do to get ready to print. Using it's easy. Just take a photo that you're working on inside of Photo Raw. You could access this from Browse or from inside of Edit once you've done your work. And then simply click over here on the Resize button on the right-hand bumper. You notice how it instantly switches into the Resize module. The controls on the right are for Resize, and the presets on the left are now Resize presets. One of the great and powerful things about Resize AI is you now have the ability to see all of the photos inside of your folder rather than just a single photo. So if I click on the film strip, you'll actually see all the other photos that are in the same folder that I'm working on. You'll notice how the film strip has changed a little bit. It shows me the original size and the resized dimension sizes. From here, I can select each photo that I want to work on, change the width and the height, and whenever I have a selection of photos and I hit the Done button, it's going to automatically create the new files for me. It makes batch processing with Resize a lot easier, and I'll grow into greater detail of how that works in other videos, but I just want to give you guys kind of the basics of how to get started. For me, the best way to get started in Resize is to use one of the built-in presets. They're going to take all the mystery out of preparing your photo for print. Let's say I want to make a 24 by 30 canvas gallery wrap on an Epson printer with this. Well, I simply go over to the presets. I'm just going to go to the Epson canvas category and then pick that size, 24 by 30. You notice when I pick the preset, it's going to automatically load the crop tool. That's because a lot of the times the print sizes that we want to make don't match the proportions of our camera. So our camera shot a little bit wider than that print size. So it'll bring up the crop tool. I can now recompose my photo, crop it just to be the part that's interesting to me, and then I'll hit the apply button. You'll notice over here on the right in the photo size pane, it shows me the width and the height and the resolution that are all automatically selected for me based on my preset. This picks the right resolution for my Epson printer. And if I look in the sharpening section, it's going to turn on the correct amount of sharpening for that output type and it's turned the gallery wrap feature on for me already. That actually adds wings that stretch around the canvas so I don't lose any of my photo. It's pretty crazy. But my favorite part of Resize AI is the quality. So I'm going to zoom in to 100% and let you guys take a look at this. Wow, look at that. That's the after results. Let me do a split screen preview so you can see the difference. The original pixels are on the left and the resized sharpened output is on the right. You always want to make these adjustments at 100% and you can fine tune this based on your own taste. For me, I think that might be a little sharper than I like. So I'm going to go to the settings pane and I'm just going to grab the smoothness slider and I'm going to bring it up a little bit. There we go. I like that better. Now when I'm ready, I just hit the done button and I can choose what type of file it's going to create for me. I can choose from any of the standard file types and where it's going to get saved. Or I can use the powerful export module to do it as well. If I press export, I can now use any of my export presets that I've created or that are built into Photo Raw, and I can choose things like how the file's named, what file type it is, where it gets saved. I can even add a watermark to it if I wanted to. The options are limitless in the export dialog. Now, Resize's job is always to save a new file with all of your settings rendered, cropped and sharpened and ready to go. I'm going to create a TIFF file. In this case, I'm going to save it right next to where the original photo was from. So in the naming section, I'll just say use my current file name and then I'm going to add resize to it. So I know it's the one that I've resized. I'm going to put it in the same folder as the original. I'm going to save it as a TIFF in 16 bit. I don't need to worry about transparency. Obviously, I'm not going to resize it. You even note it says resize is controlled by resize AI. I've already done my sharpening. I'm going to make sure all my metadata gets embedded and I just press the export button. And there it is. You notice right down here in my film strip, there's that new TIFF file that I created that says resize. It's been cropped, resized, sharpened, and those gallery wrap wings have been added. And as I mentioned, it's saved right in the same folder as the others, because that's where I selected to save it. And when we go back to browse, we'll see it right there next to the original photo. All right, there you go. That's the basics of using resize AI inside of On One Photo Raw. Thanks for watching.